Hey folks, today we're going to learn how to query and parse a REST API using invoke REST method, a command that comes included in PowerShell. We're going to be using GitHub's REST API version 3 to get and parse data from GitHub. If you're following along on Windows PowerShell 5.1, please note Windows PowerShell uses TLS 1.0. Some sites, including GitHub, require TLS 1.2. Running the command on line 4 will make your current Windows PowerShell 5.1 session use TLS 1.2. The setting, however, does not persist and will need to be run each time. If you're on PowerShell Core, this step isn't needed. Now, every API is a little different, so it's always extremely important to read the documentation to understand its particular nuances. The GitHub API documentation lets you know that empty values are returned as null, timestamps are returned in ISO 8601 format, and all data is sent and received as JSON. With that said, let's run some queries. Now we'll run invoke REST method to query the API. We'll use the URI provided in the documentation to make our first call. You'll see when the request is made, data is returned to us. Note that the method parameter isn't explicitly needed in this case for our get, but as a good practice you should always specify the HTTP method in your call. Often REST APIs can have a level of discoverability. From the return data of the root endpoint we just queried, we can see other endpoints that we can query. With that, Let's go ahead and query a GitHub user. You can see information about this user is returned from our query. Let's talk about headers. You can use headers to define parameters for the HTTP transaction, like what version of an API to use. We'll do that in our calls. Since you can pass multiple parameters in a header, you'll want to use a hash table to create it. In our case, we're going to pass accept and specify that in our calls, we always want to use version 3 of GitHub's REST API. If you wanted to know how I knew what value to pass the accept parameter, it was in the documentation. Pagination more or less refers to how many pages of data that are returned on an API call. Every API implements this a little bit different, so as always, be sure to read the documentation. The GitHub API defaults to 30. We'll query the PowerShell team's Git repositories. As you can see, only 30 records are returned, but there's definitely more than that. And here's a couple ways to see them. The first way, we'll add the query to the URI itself. We'll specify one page with 100 records, and when we do that and run it, you'll see we get 100 records back. Some APIs also allow you to pass parameters using an HTTP body. Doing this is much like passing headers. You could put your HTTP parameters into a hash table and pass them into the body parameter of the command. If we specify one page, with 50 records per page in this case, and then run that, as requested, you'll see we get 50 records back. Some endpoints in REST APIs are protected and require authentication. As you can see, calling the user org's endpoint here threw an error. If we take a look, we can see the HTTP status of 401 unauthorized. And if we look at the message that was returned, we can even see that it says it requires authentication. GitHub offers a few different ways to authenticate to the API, and I'm gonna go create a simple OAuth token to do so for this demo. I've created my OAuth token, and you can see using a header, I've put it into that header variable. I can rerun the invoke rest method, and this time you see, I don't get the error. It doesn't return anything because my user isn't part of any orgs in GitHub, but because it didn't return an error, I know this worked and there was no authentication issues. I want to call out real quick, if I scroll down, PowerShell Core offers a few more ways to handle API authentication, so just be aware of that if you're using PowerShell Core over Windows PowerShell. One last thing I want to point out, PowerShell is deserializing the return data for us automatically and returning a PS custom object, so it saves us from having to handle that. If I use a different utility to parse the API, like CURL, you can see it just returns raw JSON, as opposed to using invoke REST method in PowerShell, where it returns a PS custom object. I've mentioned it a few times in this video, but in your travels and using invoke rest method, just be aware that new features are being added to the command in PowerShell Core, which do not exist in Windows PowerShell 5.1. Well, that's how you use invoke rest method for querying a REST API. Thanks for watching.